All right, we'll do a quick update video on the 70 here and um, just kind of go over what all I've done and where we're at with this thing. So we hung the door on. I don't think that was done last time. And then we scared ourselves with how poorly everything fit by hanging the door. So we had to make some adjustments and corrections. So you can see the gap looks pretty good and but then about right here down where I did the cab corner it was out into the door so what we did was came in here and cut this up and then kept moving this back and cutting and moving to get this gap better I mean it's not it's not perfect this isn't gonna be a show truck so you know, it was almost touching before we cut this here and just gently massage this with a five pound hammer over this way. And now we're pulling that in. This was out, rolling out this way. So I had to cut it here to get it to shrink to fit this radius here. So we did that and that's welded up and it looks good. And then again with a straight edge across the back here, this was this was out, it was not an optical illusion. So we had to cut it here and then I hooked, welded a ratchet strap here and then hooked it up there so I could so I could cut it here and put some pressure on it to pull it in tighter and keep trimming it until we got it in line there. So now I've got to finish welding that up, but it's coming together. That turned out pretty good. The door closes nicely. Um, and then we got all that in there. I drilled couple holes in the outer rocker to weld it to the inner rocker there kind of how the factory did it and then all this is welded up and yeah so that I mean it closes pretty good I guess there oh well, there would be a rubber thing in there to to make sure the the depth of how far it closes or whatever but I'm impressed with how well it closes. And all that's on. Looks pretty good. And then while I was waiting on the hey, I was waiting on the welding wire, I started cutting and doing some exploratory search. And then in the meantime I got a new uh shop inspector. So I'm a little puppy there. The children wanted a little puppy dog so we got a little puppy dog so he's up here supervising to make sure I do a good job say hey puppy <laughs> he's a mess but uh so while I was doing some cutting and stuff I, I cut out above the windshield and shocked myself with well, I'm behold more rust so and you can see up here no holes. I mean, you could just, just put my knife through it. So all that was... I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. If I'm going to cut the roof off and then put a new skin on the top and then replace this panel and then obviously have to replace this panel. So this panel is like a hundred and something dollars. This panel is over three hundred dollars. And then... I mean, hopefully that's the last panels I'd have to buy, but I swear that roof skin last week was like 200 something dollars. And I did a DOD delete on a truck. Um, I dropped it off Saturday and I got it going Tuesday. So I had to go to Summit and get the parts to, to do that uh, delete. And I was going by the roof skin and that thing, but then I was like, golly, the... The price already jumped on it, so which I guess should have been a clue to go ahead and get it because it's probably going to only get higher in price. But, um, you know, 
still got to finish this up. I, you know, what I'm trying to do is, you know, weld here, come over here, and keep the heat out of everything. But, you know, sometimes you get impatient waiting on that. So, uh, you know, there's that hole. And then that roof just pretty bad. Uh, you know, I mean, I knew the, we knew this panel uh, between the top skin and bottom skin was bad, but man, you know, I, then once you get it off, you're like, wow, it's worse than I thought. So that's just been the, the theme of this truck is this, wow, it's just worse than I thought. So, you know, I got to cut a panel for that. We got all this, so. You know, hopefully this side will just be a repeat of that side. That side, I mean, it went pretty smooth, I guess. Um, so, you know, we'll just keep keep pushing on, keep cutting out rust, and keep welding in new metal. So eventually, eventually, we've got to get rid of all the rust, right? You know? I mean, eventually, we got to run out of stuff to cut off. And re-weld back in, right? I mean, eventually, we got to run out of rust to cut off. So, but that's where we're at with it. Uh, just been, just been busy with everything else, and uh, haven't haven't really worked on it much other than getting the door on and then uh, correcting the fitment of this cab corner. So. But, uh, yeah, so I'll finish welding this out and then go around. And, again, I don't, I don't know what to do about this, about this roof skin. Because, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty bad. Uh, you know, and what sucks is the other cab, you know, the, the roof and all this part on it's better than this one, but... You know it has its own problems and each each one has their own problems so it's you know it's like trying to pick the one with the least amount of problems and you know just picking it and roll with it which I'm already invested in this cab pretty well you know with the work I've done here and all and you know might as well just see it through and finish this one out so you know I thought about cutting the roof and all off that other other cab and all but I mean you know it, it's a tough call you know because you're going to spend what close to $500 more on patch panels for this you know but then if you cut that off you got how much time and all and cutting it off and cleaning it up and trying to get ready to put on here so I may just buy the roof skin and um and the other piece and all and just just roll with it because god knows what i'm gonna find when i cut the roof off and i'm sure there's if it's if it's like the rest of the truck there's gonna there's gonna be more rust there's no way around that so but anyway that's the update on this thing for now um you know i'm just gonna keep cutting out the rust and welding in new panels and now eventually, eventually, we're going to run out of rust to cut out on this garbage. And we can have a solid cab to be able to put a, a truck together. So that's the hope. But that's the update on this thing for now. Um, I got the AC working on that truck. And it was something silly. So I've worked and searched and everything on that. And, uh, the short story is the way that I wired the fan on it to do the, uh, the red 33 connector is where it's supposed to go. But since this truck, it uses the recirc uh, from the high, high side fitting. So I jumped out all the re all the pressure sensors and checked everything, and I thought it was the module and the dash. That wasn't it. Um, checked and checked and checked. And finally found, 
on performancetruck.net or whatever it is that a guy had the same issue the ac light would come on in the dash but it would not trigger the compressor on and that's what it was is they were using the green and white wire from that goes to the pin in the ecu to trigger the relay to turn the fan on when the ac was running and i guess it took when you turned it on it took the voltage to turn to trigger the relay so it didn't have enough left over it didn't have enough to turn the trip the relay or enough to signal the ecu that the user was requesting ac so it wouldn't turn on so as soon as i cut that wire then the ac worked it kicked the compressor on and everything functioned as it should and then another thing that i read was that if you if the idle's rough and whatever with the different cam and everything that the computer would shut the ac off because it felt like it would you know pull and just keep from stalling out and it wouldn't run the compressor so once i got that working that was kind of the case too so this the previous owner we won't mention any names wanted that real look look that real choppy uh car show idle and uh so we you know against better judgment and gave it to him and then now i went in there and took all that crap out so it's a lot smoother of an idle and now it'll run the, uh run the ac at idle so i was happy to get that figured out i spent way too much time trying to figure figure that out you know i mean i'm not a very good troubleshooter i mean i know how to read diagrams and you know i tested everything i could test and it made no sense as to why the ac wouldn't turn on the compressor because you could it wasn't sending the ground to the compressor relay clutch relay but then i even sent power from the hvac module to the thing and it would work so um another guy claimed the one that i found on performance net that thread uh he claimed that he could force it on with hp tuners and it would come on and work so i probably wouldn't have figured it out if i hadn't found that thread so anyway i'm probably the only person that's ever done that but maybe it'll help somebody out and it's having the same issue but anyway that's the updates for now